our session speaker is Maxime Cockerell, uh, Director of Cloud Security Architecture at RBC. At Royal Bank of Canada, Maxime leads the Google Cloud Security Architecture team. He has over a decade of international experience in aerospace and defense, healthcare, and financial uh, industries, helping organizations to move their digital transformation using the public cloud. And Maxime is an expert on the cloud domain. And today, uh, Maxime will talk about security controls in the public cloud. All right, so let's welcome Maxime and then Maxime, all yours. You can start uh, your presentation. Perfect, thank you, Ryan. I will share my screen. Okay, perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Maxime Kirkwell and I'm Director of Cloud Security Architecture Team at RBC. And um, I have the pleasure to lead the Google Cloud Security Architecture Team. Uh, I'm a tech blogger since uh, 2012. You can follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter. And my goal today is to give you an introduction about security control in the public cloud. My presentation will help you to identify and define preventive, detective, and remediation security control for Azure, AWS, and GCP. If you have any question during the presentation or maybe after this presentation, um, do not hesitate to let me know. Uh, I know you have a, you have a chat uh, you have a chat feature, you can uh, send your question. And uh, if you want, you can also send, uh, send me uh, your question after this presentation uh, via LinkedIn or via Twitter. Uh, that would be my pleasure to, uh, to help you. And um, this presentation will give you uh, an overview about security control. And that will be an introduction uh, to the next presentation uh, this afternoon uh, given by my coworker, uh, Igor from uh, RBC. And the name of this presentation is Trust But Verify, uh, verifying security control in the public cloud. And the two presentations are, are linked. And uh, I will invite you to attend uh, to the presentation of my coworker, uh, Igor. Okay, cool. Uh, now to start, just a quick disclaimer, uh, any view or opinion expressed in this presentation, that is only my opinion, my personal opinion, and that not represents the opinion of uh, RBC, the Sonochi management or its employee. Uh, that is only my opinion. Okay, cool. Uh, now the agenda. Uh, for today. We will give you a quick introduction about cloud governance. We will talk together about uh, cloud control matrix. And after that, we will go directly uh, more deep in the subject of this presentation about cloud security control. Uh, we will talk about detective, preventive, and responsive uh, control. And we will see also uh, some examples related to Azure, AWS, and GCP. I have only 25 minutes for to give this presentation. That's the reason why uh, I call this presentation uh, an introduction. But uh, if you are interested to, to know more about this subject, and uh, if you uh, if you have questions, do not hesitate to uh, let me know or just uh, uh, send your question. Uh, I like to start my presentation uh, with a quick reminder of the chair responsibility model in the public cloud. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it because my uh, because the two previous uh, presenter of this event um, have already uh, spent a lot of time to talk uh, to talk about about it, about it. Uh, but for me, uh, what is very very important to understand with this presentation is the scope of the, of your of uh, responsibility, because you have the responsibility of the cloud provider, but you have also your responsibility. And in this presentation, we will focus only on the responsibility. Uh, for the customer, your responsibility. Uh, as you can see in this example, uh, you are responsible of your data and uh, you are also responsible of if you run a virtual machine on the public cloud, you are also responsible about the operating system, um, the network configuration and the firewall uh, configuration versus you are not responsible to the hardware stack. Uh, because this hardware stack is managed by the cloud provider. And that's the reason why I like to start my presentation with that, because that, uh, that splits um, the responsibility into mode, uh, the responsibility for the customer, for you, and the responsibility uh, for the cloud provider, like Azure, AWS, or GCP. Okay, now, uh, I think it's also important to talk about cloud governance because 
um, without, a, without a right governance, um, it's impossible to, uh, to drive a migration or a transformation of uh, an on-prem project to, to, to the cloud or versus to start, uh, to start a cloud project. Um, as you know, uh, in terms of governance, it's also very important because it's a new paradigm. You have some, uh, the risk between the risk you will have uh, for your on-premise infrastructure are very, very different to the risk you can have um, on the cloud, on the public cloud. Uh, I can give you an example, a quick example I like to, I like to use. For example, um, with, with, an, uh, with the on-prem world, you are responsible of uh, all the hardware stack. For example, you are responsible for the redundancy. You are responsible also for the configuration of your uh, hypervisor. If you use Microsoft Hyper-V, if you use uh, VMware ES6, you are responsible of that. Um, in the case of the public cloud, you are not responsible because this part is managed by the cloud provider. But you are responsible for some other aspects. For example, um, if you start to uh, if you start to create uh, if you create a storage account, you know, just to to store some data uh, in the public cloud, that is that is something of, of very common. Um, you are responsible to configure. Uh, correctly your storage account. For example, if you want to expose your storage account directly to internet, or if you want to keep your storage account private. And to do all this configuration, that is under your responsibility. And I, I will continue with this example because um, when, you, when you create a storage account, uh, sometimes you don't want to have this storage account directly exposed to internet. And you want to prevent some misconfiguration. Uh, in the previous presentation, uh, in the previous presentation, the speaker explained very well um, uh, all the uh, security incidents related to storage account because some storage accounts are, um, are misconfigured and the data could be directly exposed to internet and someone can just steal this data. Um, if you want to prevent that, you can enforce some security control and you can enforce some preventive security control. You will create a control to say, I don't want to have my, I don't want to have the storage account of my organization exposed to internet. And, and to do that, in a, if, you, if you see my, um, my screen, if you, uh, that will be a guardrail. And that is a real example of guardrail or security policy, we can call that also like that, you can enforce. That is the first example I can give you. And also, uh, you know, if you want to, uh, you have maybe, uh, you want to move to the cloud, but maybe you have some uh, data residency uh, engagement. For example, if you store um, uh, medical information or if you store uh, uh, some information related to the, uh, to the credit card, you need to conform some, to some regulation. And maybe in this regulation, or maybe in the engagement you have with your customer, you are uh, only allowed to, uh, to store this data in some specific public cloud region. For example, Canada Central or Canada East, if you are in Canada with, uh, uh, with, 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 uh, with Azure, for example. Um, and to enforce that and to prevent the misconfiguration related to that, you can also some, create some, uh, some security control, some security policy uh, to, uh, to, to prevent uh, a deployment and to prevent a misconfiguration. Um, and, and that is also very, very important uh, to think um, when you deploy or when you migrate an application from on-prem to the cloud or if you start a new, uh, if you start a new project in the public cloud. And a lot of people uh, ask me some question and say me, okay, Max, okay, I, I understand why uh, security control is important, why I need to have security control in, in the public cloud. But for me, I have only uh, a small team of uh, two SRE or two, uh, two DevOps guy uh, in my team. And we don't know how we can start because we don't know which security control we need to define. And to do that, uh, to do that, I can recommend you to start with a cloud control matrix. The cloud control matrix, it's, uh, um, it's, uh, it's an Excel file. And in this uh, big Excel file that cover uh, 16 domain and cover uh, uh, 133 control objective. Uh, 
And uh, that is a framework you can put in place. And this framework is created by the cloud, uh, by the cloud security alliance. And that, that could be your first, uh, your, your starting point uh, about, uh, about which control I need to enforce. And that will give you some, uh, some idea about some control you need to enforce to have a, a secure cloud environment. I can give you some uh, some example about that. Um, here, that is an example about the cloud control uh, matrix. Um, I would like to highlight to use some uh, example related to uh, to cryptography, for example. Uh, some best practice is also to have uh, data encryption, and you can have you know when you are in the public cloud, you can have different uh, level of data encryption. For example, you can use the encryption provided by the cloud provider to encrypt your data, but you can also, if you want to do that, you can also bring uh, your customer manage uh, encryption key, your uh, CMEC key, and if you want to encrypt the data, and that could be a type of uh, security control you can uh, you can define also. And, uh, and also, uh, in, if we talk about encryption, what we can recommend you is to have encryption at rest and also encryption in transit. And, and that's why I think the cloud control matrix, it's a very good starting point for a lot of organization. Uh, and from this cloud control matrix, you can fork that and you can create uh, your own custom uh, control uh, applied to your um, different uh, use case. But now uh, let me redefine because I, I talk about uh, cloud control. I have already uh, talked about preventive, detective, but um, if you if you want to uh, to understand the difference between a detective versus a preventive control, um, I will take the time to explain you. Uh, detective control it's only a security control uh, you will uh, define and you will apply. And this control, uh, when this control fires, that only will you generate some uh, notification, some information to say, oh. Max, you have a developer in your organization uh, who has deployed uh, a storage account in, uh, in is not in approved location. For example, a storage account tried to deploy uh, um, a developer tried to deploy a storage account uh, in the um, in the US uh, region, and this and the uh, detective security control will only uh, say that uh, to you. You are someone which, who have already do done that, and that will inform you. Uh, the key word to understand in this case is inform you. So preventive control will block your developer or your uh, DevOps guy uh, to do uh, a deployment of a storage account in not in approved uh, region. Um, and that is very important to understand the difference between detective and preventive. Detective that will inform you and preventive that will block. And I think uh, when you understand that, that's, uh, that is a two type of uh, security control we have in a lot of organization. Uh, but some people will also say to me, okay, Max, now I understand I, I need to create a detective control and also some preventive control for my workload in the public cloud. Okay, I can start to use uh, the cloud uh, control matrix as a starting point, but Maybe is that not enough? A lot of organizations, when they start to uh, to apply a cloud governance with a security policy, with guardrail, uh, what they try to uh, to do, they try to build a technical control library. Um, as you can see on my screen, you have an example of uh, uh, of technical cloud library uh, for Google Cloud. Uh, but what is very important in this case, and what I want to highlight to you in this case, is is the input. Um, Require to cloud to uh, to create your cloud control you the input require to create your cloud technical control library uh, as you can as I uh, as I said before uh, some security control can be extracted from the cloud control uh, matrix but that can, could be also some uh, best practice and also some cloud control uh, requirement and also you have maybe some internal security policy and standard for example uh, maybe you can create some uh, security control because you have some naming convention in place in your organization and you want to enforce that in the public cloud uh, that is some example of uh, input who can help you to define your uh, cloud uh, technical control library uh, that is very important And in my introduction, I said uh, preventive, detective, and we have also some responsive control. Uh, that is also another very good point. I would like to, uh, to take the time to explain you because you know, uh, when you have a preventive that block uh, 
uh, that block a deployment uh, that, that prevent misconfiguration. Uh, that is when it's a preventive control, when it's a detective that inform you. But when, when, the, when an organization have a good maturity level and they have already detective and preventive control uh, in place, the next step, they want to have responsive control. Um, I will use this, uh, this example uh, here, as you can see, that is applied to, uh, to the Azure platform, but that could be applied to uh, AWS and, uh, and GCP. Uh, in, this case, what we, in this case, what we have, uh, we have a virtual machine, um, a Linux virtual machine directly exposed to internet, and uh, the SSH port is, uh, is exposed uh, to internet. And uh, an alert was generated because someone, a malicious guy, tried to brute force the, uh, the SSH and tried to find, uh, to find the login and the password uh, uh, used by, uh, by the SSH uh, process of your uh, virtual machine. And an alert is generated, is, uh, is generated. But in this case, you have two options to prevent this misconfiguration. The first option is you need to say to someone, OK, uh, we have an alert and you need to go to the network security group and fix the network security group because in this in the case of this network security group it's maybe open to all the internet and you want to restrict the scope um, and and you want to put you want to define which source ip can uh, can access to uh, the ssh port of uh, of my virtual machine and not to uh, not uh, all the internet but that is the first step is the, the the first option is to do that manually but if you want to uh, to have an automated process, because maybe you don't want to wake up your sysadmin at 2 a.m. in the morning, and you want to have a process to, to do that, you can automate that. And that uh, the automation part, that is a responsive control. So the idea is to have a playbook, and when, when your alert is, um, when your alert is generated, that will automatically trigger a playbook. And this playbook will do, uh, will fix the misconfiguration for you. And in the case of Azure, you can automate that uh, very, uh, is, uh, um, it's very easy to, uh, to automate that. And for that, you, you can use uh, Logic Apps and you can define some uh, workflow automation in uh, Azure Security Center. And uh, in this case, when an alert will be triggered, that will automatically trigger the right, uh, the right uh, Logic App and the Logic App will fix uh, the misconfiguration in the network security group for you. And in this case, what also what is very good is when an alert is generated and, and triggers the, uh, the Logic App, the time, um, that will be uh, only a few seconds versus if you do that manually, you will wake up your sysadmin. Your sysadmin will take the time to uh, logging or try uh, in the Azure uh, console and maybe try just to execute a script or try to fix the issue, to fix the misconfiguration in the Azure portal. You will spend a lot of time and all this time that during all this time, your virtual machine is still exposed to internet, and and you have a you have an open thread. And if you want to to fix that automatically, I invite you to think about responsive control for your organization. But my recommendation about that is for you is to have a good maturity uh, level. Is start with start to define some control, some detective and preventive control, and when that. It's when you have a good maturity level for that, after that, you can jump to responsive control. Uh, and now to apply to apply control, uh, because I, uh, I tried to use example in Azure, in AWS and GCP, uh, but we are lucky because uh, all these three uh, cloud provider uh, have uh, native services to apply the security control. Um, in Azure, we can use Azure policy. And what is good with Azure policies, we can enforce preventive, detective security control. And also in Azure, uh, as I said before, we can leverage a service like a Logic App uh, to, uh, to do the, uh, the responsive uh, part uh, of your security control. Uh, just um, to give you an example, in this case, um, I put you an example about an Azure policy, and, and the goal of this Azure policy is only to say, okay, uh, we, we we have already defined a list of allowed location, uh, for example, Canada Central or Canada East, and you want to uh, to only allow uh, this location. Your developer are not allowed to deploy resources in in 
resources in the location uh, which are not defined in this list. Uh, that is an example. And after that, what is good also with Azure policies, you can apply your Azure policy at different level in Azure. You know, uh, in Azure, you have your tenant and in your tenant, you can have multiple subscription and you can organize these different subscription in management group and you can apply the security the Azure policy you can apply the Azure policy at the management group level or you can also apply uh, at the subscription level um, uh, as you want and you can you, you can also uh, manage exception because that is also important to understand in your in your workflow when you define security control uh, sometimes you have no choice to uh, to create exception and you can you can you can uh, um, you, you can create exception at the uh, at the subscription level or at the management group level. Uh, just a quick reminder: in a management group, you can have multiple subscription. For example, you can have a management group for your production uh, subscription, and also management group for non-prod, and also management group for engineering. And you can apply different uh, uh, different type of uh, Azure policy uh, at the different level of the management group. And you have the you have something you have the same concept uh, the same similar concept in uh, AWS in AWS if you want to apply preventive control you can use uh, SCP uh, service control policy and um, also if you want to uh, apply some detective security control uh, you can create some uh, an AWS uh, config rule. Um, on the screen, as you can see, you have an example of an SCP policy. And in this case, what we want to what we want to do, we want only to allow uh, EC2 instant type uh, T2 dot micro um, in uh, in our uh, AWS organization. It's to give you some example about uh, some type of security control you can enforce for your different uh, organization. And uh, you have also the same thing for uh, for GCP. In GCP, you can have, if you want to apply preventive control, uh, you can use uh, organization policy. Uh, now it's not possible to create some custom organization policy, but Google has already defined more 100 organization policy to you. And uh, with some example, you can apply that also, uh, as I said, for Azure, uh, similar uh, in GCP, you can apply that at different level. Um, you can apply that directly at the uh, at the folder level or different or at the project level of your uh, of your GCP resources, uh, and also you can create some exception. It's also possible uh, to do that. Sorry. Uh, in terms of conclusion, uh, that uh, I think I have two or three minutes uh, to do my to do my conclusion. Um, that was an introduction about uh, what is a security control. What what's the three main type of security control, uh, preventive, detective, and responsive, and also how we can apply the security control and leverage native uh, services in Azure, in AWS, or in GCP. Uh, but what I would like to um, highlight uh, to you is before to start the coding part of, uh, of the security po uh, policy uh, part, think about the big think about uh, about the big picture and try to uh, to build a governance framework and when you have this governance framework uh, in place, you can you can um, you can work to define some security control and when you have your list of security control defined, you can start to uh, you can start the coding part and create your Azure policy or organization policy and, and deploy that. That is very, very, very important um, to, uh, to follow the treatment stage, uh, design time, build time, and run time. Um, that's all for me. Uh, if you have any question, do not hesitate to, uh, to let me know. Uh, that will be my pleasure. That was an introduction. Uh, that was an, an introduction uh, about uh, security control in the public cloud. And uh, thank you so much uh, to having me for this presentation. Oh, I have a question. Perfect. I am familiar with Microsoft Azure only. Oh, it's easy or difficult for me to learn AWS and GCP. That is a very good question. And thank you so much for this question. Uh, you know, uh, what I tried to, what I said to, uh, to, to, to my uh, team member and to all the people who tried to ask me this question said, okay, I know one cloud platform or i can jump to another cloud platform it's very very difficult to know more to two cloud platform because uh, because the market change very fast the number of features also change uh, very very fast uh, for me what is very important is to invest time to have a very good knowledge of one cloud platform uh, and after that you can jump to another cloud platform and in terms of uh, of learning what i recommend you to do is to attend to some uh, 
to some presentation like this presentation. And also uh, you have some uh, online platform uh, available. For example, uh, you have a LinkedIn Learning. Um, if you speak French, I invite you to follow my courses on the LinkedIn Learning uh, platform. And you have also some platform like uh, Cloud Guru, Udemy, Pluralsight, and you can follow some, um, some uh, cloud courses. But that is the first step is uh, follow, uh, follow a courses is something of good, but that will not replace you your um your end zone experience and for that i will invite i invite you to start a project that could be a, a personal project if you don't have the the chance to do that in your uh, in your day-to-day -day at work but try to practice and that is that is a uh, what in, invite you to to do if you want to uh, to learn a new cloud uh, a new cloud provider Okay, I have another question. Cloud providers have different ways to implement their security control. How can we manage those control in a multi-cloud environment? That is also another excellent question. A lot of people have, have already asked me this question. Um, in my case, you have some uh, external vendor tool uh, who can help you to uh, enforce. Uh, you will define the security control in this vendor tool and they will try to apply um, they will try to apply uh, the security control in AWS, in Azure, or GCP. Um, based on my experience, uh, if you start your journey uh, in terms of cloud security control, I invite you uh, to use a uh, to use a cloud native feature um, offered by the uh, by the platform. And if you want to have the same way to deploy all, all your uh, all your different uh, cloud security control for Azure or for AWS or for GCP. Um, in terms of coding, in terms of coding, you can leverage um, uh, a language, an infrastructure language like like uh, Ashicorp or Pulumini, for example. And you can you can use this type of language to uh, create the security control for Azure and also the security control for uh, for AWS for your organization. I hope that uh, answered to your question. And in my case, uh, I, I I recommend you if you start your journey. Uh, your security control journey to use uh, to use a native feature uh, versus to use an external tool. Do you have uh, any other question? Um, if you don't have any other question, thank you so much uh, for your time and to attend to my presentation. Uh, I know some people are students, cloud professional. If you have any question, you want to know more about that, I will invite you to check my blog. Uh, zigmax.net or contact me uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, that will be uh, a pleasure for me to try to understand uh, your problematic and uh, and also uh, answer to your question if I can. Uh, and if I and if it's not possible for me, I will try to dispatch your question to the uh, to another pe person who can answer to your question. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you, Brian, for this opportunity.